What do you think about some of these, you know, MDMA assisted therapies for people that have, you know, for traumatized soldiers? I mean, I, I know you're not a fan of necessarily other substances, but they're trying to do a similar thing that maybe can, cannot be done with people with extreme trauma. Uh, what are your thoughts on something like that? I'm very worried about it because, you know, I've been a psychiatrist for 40 years. I've seen this party before. Um, I have seen how opiates are innocuous. In fact, in the 90s, doctors were shamed if they didn't keep people out of pain. That pain um, was a, considered the fifth vital sign. Um, and if someone was in pain, you needed to give them an opiate and you see where that got us. Yeah. That wasn't good. Or that alcohol is a health food. Again, in the 90s, um, our first clinic was right next to the Napa Valley in Northern California. And everyone's so excited. You know, I have to have my two glasses of red wine a day that that is good for me. It's a complete lie. Um, or that, you know, and we're in the middle of marijuana is innocuous. Back during the last presidential election, Vice President Biden, when he was asked about the federal government legalizing marijuana, he said, I think there still needs to be more study. And then Senator Cory Booker on national television shamed Biden and said, man, are you high? The answer is in. And Booker was wrong. The answer is not in. The answer is the opposite. The teenagers who use marijuana have an increased risk of anxiety, depression, and suicide. Um, I published a study on a thousand marijuana users. Every area of their brain is lower in activity. So now we're coming to psilocybin and ketamine and I'm for anything safe that helps my patients suffer less. But let's not do those things that potentially you're going to have to do over and over again to maintain relief. Let's not do those until at least first we've gotten your diet right. Until first we've looked at your brain and know that we are in fact dealing with PTSD and not traumatic brain injury. I published two studies in 2015 showing we could separate with high levels of accuracy traumatic brain injury from post-traumatic stress disorder. So think physical trauma from emotional trauma. And Discover Magazine listed my research as one of the top 100 stories in science for 2015. So I was really happy with that, in fact, sent it to all of my critics, at least everyone I could think of. <laughs> um, but why is that important? Well, if you don't know what you're dealing with, how, how do you properly treat it? If you really think it's emotional trauma, then calming the brain is a really good idea. But what if it's the effect of traumatic brain injury? So many of these soldiers also had blast injuries and they already have a low activity brain. What would happen if we decrease the activity in a low activity brain? It's you disinhibit people and you make them dramatically worse. So we're doing all of this. We're unleashing psilocybin on the population where we're not looking at their brains. And it's the first thing everybody wants. It's like, oh, mushrooms can, you know, will you prescribe those? for me. And I'm like, not yet. Let's be thoughtful. And let's not think of it as the first thing to do. Let's think of it as maybe 12th or 13th on the list. And, you know, just one example. I, I was a consultant on the movie Concussion with Will Smith. And, and you'll remember all the Oscar stuff about diversity and Will Smith should have been nominated. I thought he was just awesome and amazing in that movie. Like, I'm a huge Will Smith fan. And right before the Oscars last year, um, I read his autobiography. And it was amazing. 
But at the end of the autobiography, he said he did ayahuasca 14 times. Well, Brian, it clearly didn't fix him because on national television, he blew up his life. And, you know, if these things fix people, you know, one would think 14 times would be enough. Yeah, that's an interesting statement. I mean, I've, I've had a very life-changing and powerful ayahuasca ceremony about five years ago. And I, I do think that, you know, infrequent doses of some of these things can have beneficial effects and they have. Um, as far as with, with Will, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of factors there, let's just say that. Um, but I understand your point of saying maybe fi fix the basics first. Obviously, if you're prescribing anything regularly to someone, it's not really a good sign. Um, yeah, and so people that are just trying to get more and more things like psilocybin and marijuana to try to seem, uh, solve a problem, that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Um, but I will say for me, some psychedelics have gotten me much further than, than other things haven't, so yeah. Well, tell, I'm curious. You know, I ask my patients, um, I do a series on Instagram called Scan My Brain and um, Annalyn McCord, the actress from 90210, was on, and she did a documentary on plant medicine. And like you, found it incredibly helpful, but her brain wasn't healthy. And so I'm, I'm, I'm caught Be because, you know, as a doctor, my role is to decrease suffering. So I want to use anything that decreases suffering that doesn't potentially hurt you. And, you know, with these things, not having legality for very long, it's the side effects I worry about. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, their alternatives are, um, yeah, antidepressants, and we can go into Big Pharma next. Uh, maybe a lot of them don't have access to some of your IP. They go to a therapist for 30 years, they don't get anywhere. And, you know, they're stuck without having anything that can get them through or process certain things. So for me, it was, it was pivotal and very important. Um, but yeah, that's my experience. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, He's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true. And you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal. And I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.